Hey everybody, I am Allie and this is my YNR chat vlog for Sunday, February 15th. And I just wanted to start out with a couple of uh, wrap up notes about Brad. Um, First of all, I just wanted to say that I think that the actress who plays Colleen did a really great job during that entire uh, series of events. I loved, by the way, that she told Victor off in front of everybody because, in my opinion, Victor was acting like such a monster this week. I mean, basically saying that Brad should never have been in Abby's life in the first place. Um, it's better off that he's gone. I just, I was not in at all pleased with how Victor handled the situation. Yeah, you didn't like the guy, but there was still something so very hateful about it all. Um, I have to say that I'm having a hard time grasping the fact that Brad is actually gone. The image of him beneath the ice will forever be burned in my brain. I don't know if you guys had that reaction to that scene or not, but there was something just so compelling and and just hard about it that um, it's it's forever and ever in my brain. But I have to say that I think that the whole Brad funeral was kind of anticlimactic. I mean, it was a couple of people at the gravesite and a small reception afterwards. And I'm just thinking, like, who was the last major character to die on YNR? Not including Sabrina, because she wasn't on the show for very long. And I, I mean, it was it was John Abbott. John Abbott's funeral lasted for like two weeks. Everyone came up and gave a eulogy, and it was a huge, huge deal. And Brad just kind of got sweeped off to the side. I don't know. Maybe that was just my um, interpretation of it. Okay, so while Brad was dying trapped underneath uh, the icy waters, um, Nick and Sharon were getting it on. I mean, you guys saw my reaction video, and that was so authentic. I literally watched that scene, grabbed the fit camera, and stuck it in my face because it was so... Int I mean... I had to smoke a cigarette after that sex. I don't even smoke, and it, like after it was done, I was just like, that was great. I mean, my mouth was just hanging wide open. I thought it was hot. Uh, I really enjoyed it, especially, I mean, just because it was so illicit, you know? I mean, I thought it was very sexy. Um, I felt totally guilty afterwards, though. It was like, I'm, I feel like I'm in Nick's situation because I keep going back and forth. Do I, you know, do I want him with Sharon? Do I want him with Phyllis? I don't know. I, I just keep going back and forth because Nick and Phyllis have such a unique chemistry together and I want Phyllis to be happy. Um, you know, I don't want her to feel this way. I didn't want her to find out so quickly that, uh, that it was, that they did actually sleep together. Um, but I did respect the way that she handled it, and I think that it was very weird seeing her being so calm and nice. It was completely creepy. But I think that that attitude was exactly what allowed her to keep Nick. Uh, because if she would have gone crazy and acted like, you know, a psychopath and, you know, went and hunted Sharon down and screamed and yelled and did all of those, th those things, I think she would have ended up pushing Nick into Sharon's arms. So in that respect, it was almost like she was prepared for this, you know, I mean, she told Michael, do you know how many times I have uh, played this, this, you know, this is my worst nightmare, I've played this over and over in my head for so long, uh, so it was almost like she knew uh, what the strategy was going to be, um, but I think that there's a love between Nick and Sharon that is just not gonna go away. They have a lot in common. They're similar people. Um, and I think that um, they've always loved each other. Even, you know, when they were going through the divorce and when Nick was with Sharon, I or when Nick was with Phyllis, I still think that there was so much there between Nick and Sharon. Um, and it was interesting uh, when, I mean, the minute Nick came home, Phyllis knew that he had slept with her. And he confessed immediately, I think that I love you both. And that's such a horrible situation to be in. I mean, he l said later in the week that he felt that his love for Sharon was something that was in the past, but the love for Phyllis was, was more um, his future. Uh, but it's such a, an impossible situation um and I, I mean like I said I don't I think that even though Nick has resolved to be with Phyllis right now the feelings for Sharon aren't gonna go away they're going to rise up again as they did this time um it's a horrible situation the only solution I can even think of YNR is to just have a threesome that's the only thing I can think of just Phyllis and Nick and Sharon we're just gonna have them be a threesome don't give me that oh Allie look. Come on, this is the 
21st century. And I'll tell you what, that storyline, if we just had all three of them there together, living together, hooking up, one big family, um, that storyline would bring in the ratings. Okay, so finally we had some climax on the Billy, Lily, Chloe, Kane situation. Um, Billy confessed to Lily at the cabin that the baby that Chloe is carrying is actually his. I mean, blow my mind. I was not expecting that to happen anytime soon at all. Um, and I guess the thing that's m more uh, curious to me is I'm having a hard time pegging Billy for who he's really in love with. I don't know what his feelings actually are because, I, I mean, I get the sense that he maybe is actually in love with Chloe, although he tried to play it off to Lily as if it's nothing, we're not together with her, but I kind of wonder if he doesn't actually love Chloe. I think that his feelings for Lily are almost that he likes or he loves the way that Lily looks at him. You know, like he said on Friday, I, I, you know, you look at me like I'm a good person. And, you know, he knows in his heart that maybe that's not true or that he's carrying this level of guilt. Um, and I just, I wonder if what he loves about Lily is the way that she was looking at him because maybe he actually wants to be more like Kane deep down. Maybe he wants to be that good guy and maybe he is actually jealous of Kane, which I think is the case. So I kind of think that maybe Billy actually does love Chloe. And I mean, come on, Billy and Chloe do have a really good chemistry together. And I have to say, I am warming up to Chloe, I think it would be interesting to see those two together. They just kind of fit. I mean, I don't know. I guess it's a hard, it's another hard call because it's like, do opposites attract or, you know, do you want to be with someone who's more similar with you? But Billy and Chloe do have a chemistry. I think it would be interesting to watch them. P.S. Why did Chloe go to the cabin in the first place? What was she planning to say? Once she got there, I couldn't believe it. She opened the door, she's listening to their conversation, like she's walking into the house during their romantic moment. What was she planning to say? Uh, I'm here, I've got some business papers for you? I don't think so. But she walked in at exactly um, the right moment. And at the same time that uh, Lily was discovering that Chloe's baby is actually not Kane's, Kane is at the house struggling to write this Valentine's note for Chloe and realizing and coming to full terms with the fact that he still loves Lily and he wants to be with Lily and it was so passionate and amazing and we had this, you know, this series of flashbacks of Kane and Lily together. Peace. It's hard to come by. You know what I'm talking about. Don't look at me like I'm silly. I feel for you like I never do. I wanted you to stay. <laughs> so, will Lily and Kane get back together soon? I can't, almost can't believe it's happening. And actually, I'm almost afraid that no one is going to have the heart to tell Kane that Chloe's baby is not actually his, especially now that she's gone into labor. Oh my god. I also just wanted to say... We were so close to getting Catherine back, and now Clint, who, okay, make sure the kids are out of the room for this, because I have a nickname for this guy, or, or mute your computer or whatever, but Clint, my nickname for him in my head every time he comes on screen is fuckface. I just look at him and I just think, you fuckface, you know, he's just such an ass, and his face is just so fuck. So anyway, uh, Clint has kidnapped Catherine, and um, not only that, but he has clearly somehow uh, switched the DNA test um, to make sure that we are not actually going to have Catherine back in her old sp spot anytime soon, which is so disappointing because we had a party planned. Okay, and just one final note, who is the mystery woman that Victor has been talking to? Don't tell me I don't want to know. <laughs> But I just wanted to say, is it Sheila?
I, I don't know. I've had a couple of things. Is it Diane Jenkins? You know, because it's somebody who's going to come in here and, and get to Jack. And I can't figure out who it, it's going to be. Um, and also, like, I thought maybe for sure it would be Sheila, except that the person, the woman said, I've never been on an airplane before, which kind of implied that maybe she was somebody who just was not like from Genoa City, definitely not wealthy. And she made a comment like, I don't look very good now, which kind of implies that maybe Victor is going to have her have plastic surgery to hide who she actually is. I don't know who the mystery woman is. Again, please don't tell me. <laughs> I like to be surprised. I'm a purist. Um, but I am so curious to know who the mystery woman is. Okay, so those are my thoughts for now. Um, so I'm going to wrap up this video, but I'm going to be back next week at the same time, same place. Again, feel free to leave me any text comments, video responses. I'm curious to know what your thoughts on the show are this week. It's been a pretty explosive week. I mean, the storylines are definitely moving along quickly. Um, so feel free to leave a comment here, or you can go to the main page of this YouTube channel and leave me a comment just to say hi. Um, and in the meantime, you can go to my website at buttonhead.org if you'd like to check up on me before next Sunday. But otherwise, I will see you next week. Enjoy the show!